Hi everyone and welcome to the Gladcracker webinar featuring SSE. Now SSE is one of the largest, most diverse energy companies in the UK and Ireland. So let's find out a little bit more about them and what they could, what could be in store for you, graduates and, and interns or placements when you apply to their positions. So Megan is the Early Careers Recruitment Consultant and will tell you all about the opportunities that SSE has on offer and are open now on the SSE Hub on Gradcracker and also all about the recruitment process and the SSE grads and grad, grad crackerettes because they all found their job through Gradcracker so you've got new names everybody yeah. um, as they uh, yeah, all found their job through Gradcracker, Paloma, Rowan and Luke. They'll all tell you about their experiences and their future plans at SSE. So welcome everybody and thank you for joining us. So Megan, let's start with you, my love. Can you tell the students and graduates all about SSE? Yes, so um, SSE is an energy company um, and we're one of the largest generators of renewable electricity in the UK and Ireland. So we're also a proud partner for the COP26 as well. So um, to reach our goal, our net zero goal by 2050, we are looking for graduates to join us um, and bring new ideas and new skills just to help us build a world that's going to be more sustainable. Um, so we have got currently over 11,000 employees um, and I'm pleased to say that we are a living wage and a fair tax mark company as well. Um, and a little bit about the benefits as well, we have got a large number of different um, employee benefits. So we've got great pension plans, we've got discounted gym memberships, we've got discounted healthcare, um, and also a popular one as well, we can um, we can purchase up to 10 days extra holidays as well. Mm -hmm. um, so on the Gradcracker Hub, there is a section for all our benefits as well. So it is worthwhile just having a read through that. I think it's noted on the advert as well. Um, yeah. yeah, we've got a full, full section. I think Carla popped that on. So yeah, that just mm -hmm. outlines all our different benefits and stuff. So yeah. Thank you, Megan. Just to get the benefits in there, straight to the point, straight away. Straight to the point. <laughs> <laughs> like it, like it. Um, and yet, yeah, like, like Megan said, all of the benefits are on the, the listings on the SSC Hub on Gradcracker. I, I can't take you know the thanks for that because obviously the team at Gradcracker, Olivia and Georgia, shout out for you, they, they add all of the jobs and make all of the updates. So for now, what I'm going to do is move on to the quick facts round. Paloma, I'm going to start with you. Your quick fact about SSE. Yeah, so SS safety is one of SSE core values. So if it's not safe, we don't do it. And we see safety as not just being safe from hazards that you may encounter in a construction site or by dealing with high voltages. It can also include other aspects of your life, such as mental health. And just to give an idea on how that apply for us that are working from home, we usually take a few times before each meeting to provide a safety moment. So this week, for example, we discussed about uh, what activities and goal we will be committing as a team for the next month. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to just keep each other motivated and increase our fitness health. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much, Paloma. On to you, Rowan, your top fact about SSE. Yeah, so um, from an IT perspective, um, SSE is made up of seven different businesses and we call that the SSE seven. Um, so that consists of renewables, distribution, transmission, thermal, energy, solution, energy solutions, electricity and EPM. Um, so there's an IT department for each of those, but also there'll be IT departments that underpin all of those. For example, infrastructure and platforms or the Office 365 team. Um, the list goes on. But Cool. Thanks, Rowan. And we'll get to know a bit about all of those um, business areas that Rowan just mentioned a little bit later on in the webinar. So thank you very much for that. Luke, on to you. I'm not going to take the mic. Go yeah, on. that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I work for SEC Renewables. And as Megan said, yeah, we're the leading developer and operator of renewable energy um, across UK and Ireland. So as well as this, we're in the process of developing um, and soon constructing um, what's going to become the world's largest offshore wind farm. So that's really exciting um, called Dogger Bank and it's off the north coast of England. So that's a kind of great opportunity for everyone to get involved in. Um, and it's something really exciting that we're all working on. Yeah, the wind farms are amazing, aren't they? So I live on, out on the east coast and just a little bit up the road from me, there's um, the SSE wind farm at Hornsey. And you can mm -hmm. look out over the coast and see all these fantastic wind farms. It is, you know, it is quite breathtaking. And um, thank you very much for that, Luke. And last but not least, Megan, your fact. 
Um, so I don't know if you've you've seen on the news, but uh, just with the increase of wind farms being built on small smaller islands in the UK, we're wanting to reduce the effects of like wildlife and local habitats and whatnot. So um, currently we've got a project on the Isle of May, which is just a small island off of the east coast of Scotland. Um, and we've teamed up with Microsoft and it's to keep account of puffin numbers, uh, which I thought was really interesting. So um, Microsoft uh, have been installing cameras all over the island just to monitor and count the, the the number of puffins that are that are there just to um, ensure that we're not disrupting their home yeah. so I think if it is successful then I think we'll probably um, enroll that into a lot of other kind of projects um, throughout the the UK as well and it won't just be for puffins it'll be for lots of different species and wildlife as well yeah I really like that fact. Live in the middle of nowhere and seeing all the wildlife, I'd be dead interested. Um, so now we're going to move on and meet the grads. So thank you very much for all your key facts. Um, Paloma, Rowan and Luke. So on to you three. We're going to start with you, Luke. If you could tell everybody about, a bit about your background. So where you went to university and what did you study? Yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, I've done electrical and mechanical engineer at Strathclyde. I um, yeah. just graduated last, last May. Um, yeah, when I kind of was in high school, I didn't really know what kind of engineer I wanted to be. Um, so I just kind of picked a generic course, kind of quite general course um, that covered kind of a lot of different facets of engineering. Yeah. Um, I was pretty lucky within the course, um, you were able to kind of tailor the subjects kind of later on in your, your kind of year. So in kind of third year, I decided to go into that kind of renewable side of stuff, taking more wind energy courses and kind of energy policy stuff. Um, and I think that was really useful um, for kind of moving on to the SSE. But yeah, Strathclyde. Perfect. Thank you very much, Luke. And I know on to add, no pressure, Luke, but there's a lot of people from Strathclyde watching today. So of again, course. a big shout of out course. to everyone that's watching from Strathclyde. Yeah, so it's the big best place. To see you today, Luke. Big numbers. Yeah. Well, SSE is full of Strathclyde alumni, so they'll be very welcome. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're having a chat before this one, but now we're talking about geography and locations and um Luke, I'm not sure you're into the bus, but I am a little bit. So Luke thought that Leeds was on, on the coast. And I was like, no, no, sweetheart, it's kind of quite central. Luke's like, I don't know anything about England. I was like, fair yeah. point, mate. I'll take yeah. that one. <laughs> who, who, who cares about England? Um, so on to, um, right, I'm going to now, Paloma, I was going to go on to you, but Rowan, on to you. So where did you go to university and what did you study? Yeah, so I went to Lancaster University um, and I studied an integrated master's in pure maths. Um, like Luke, I didn't really know what I wanted to do after university, but I found that IT was great in terms of problem solving. That's what I really enjoy about it. So that's how I knew I wanted to um, work in IT. So was, was, the, was the large part of IT involved in your maths course then? Or is not it, really, it no, not at all. I mean, at university, I mainly studied abstract algebra and calculus, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so pure maths, there was no applied maths at all, no IT, no data science I did, but um, I just loved the problem solving, trying to find a solution. So that's why I wanted to go into technology. Oh my Lord, algebra just sends me to cult. Oh, um, <laughs> I, can, I can barely add up. Um, but yes, you were still Yeah, I'm going to shout out to you, Rowan, as well, because um, David, your old lecturer at university, I know he's watching today with a lot of um, current uh, final year math students. So a shout out to them as well to say hi. Yeah, he's a great lecturer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Thank, thanks, Rowan. Thank you, David, for watching and shout out to Mount Lancaster as well. Um, Paloma, it's a bit of a different story of you. So where did you go to university and what did you study? Yeah, I am originally from Brazil, so I went to university there and I did my undergrad in electrical engineering at the Federal University of Minas Gerais and graduated in 2019. And after that, I did a master's in sustainable energy futures at Imperial College London that I finished last year. Perfect. Thank you, Paloma. And what made you decide to come um, up to the UK and study for a master's here? Uh, I'd say it's because of the net zero targets that we have here in the UK. It's very strong and the industry is very developed here. So I was very keen on just getting the experience um, yeah. of this industry here. 
Perfect. Thank you very much, Paloma. So now we're going to move on um, to speak to the grads about why SSE. So why SSE and what about SSE did they find um, quite you know, interesting on the, on the Grad Cracker Hub? And um, so Luke, I'm going to go back to you. Um, so why SSE and why specifically, what specifically about the SSE Hub on Grad Cracker did you like the most? Yeah, yeah no worries. Um, so I think for me, um, the fact that SSE are world leaders in renewable energy um, it's huge. Kind of, it was always a sector I was keen and um, kind of passionate about getting involved in. Um, kind of looking through the Grad Cracker Hub, um, you could see a lot of previous graduates and their experiences, uh, mm -hmm. and them talking about the structure of the graduate placement was something that I loved. Um, the idea of kind of floating about different business areas, yeah. um, like it's a two-year kind of thing, and then you can just go about as much as you want, learn as much stuff. Um, I just I'd love the idea of that not being pure pinholed into a job straight away and um, you get yes. to kind of explore different facets of the business yeah. um, on a kind of personal level I agreed with a lot of the models that they had as a company um, and the vision they had for the future um, every time like I, I go to work I feel like I'm making a difference um, by kind of helping create these new renewable assets for combating climate change and helping towards this net zero targets that we all have um, for the team and, and the kind of employees that SSG have they're, kind of, they're the best in the business um, they're some of the most skilled people I've worked with um, yeah. And a lot of the teams, there's just so much to learn from them because um, they've been doing it for so long. Um, and they're kind of, yeah, at the forefront of the industry, uh, just with so many kind of successful projects. Mm -hmm. um, the range of work and the opportunities that I've got and have been presented to me have been brilliant. Um, and I feel as though even just this, this one year that I've been here, I've just grown so much as an engineer um, and just learned so much from the, the company. Yeah, so uh, I was always kind of keen on the, the kind of SSE and I'm so glad that I did kind of make the decision to come here. Yeah, definitely. And I think me and Jess can second that just from our experiences with SSE. And um, I'll go, I'll move on to you girls in a second. But me and Jess went to, we've been to oh loads of SSE sites, haven't we, Jess? So we went up to your offices in Perth and um, then we went to the Ferrybridge Power Station. We also went to the Keedby um, Wind Farm as well. And just, I think just a second, what you've just said, Luke, the willingness of all of the people who helped organise those days, you know, all, all, if, everybody from security when you got to the um, got to the power station at Ferry Bridge, all the way through to the people who, you know, took us under their wing for a full three days, it was, you know, in, in the different areas. Um, and it was just, it was just so insightful and the different sites offered so, so much different information as well. Um, yeah, so the, um, the insight is actually still on your hub on the SSE hub on Grad Cracker. So definitely worth going and have a look. Um, some really good imagery and videos from that day. But yeah, I, we, I think we would agree with that, wouldn't we, Jess, about what Luke just mentioned? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know I always remember that day. I was so ill and went oh, yeah. it. And it wasn't because I was a mother. I had the worst cold in the world. <laughs> and I remember I was like, I don't think I could talk today. And the team that we were with, honestly, mm. they just got us through the day. They were amazing. And you know, you said earlier, Luke, about like passion and interest. Yes. And everyone we spoke to was just so willing to, and I, I remember saying to them, no, I don't understand, you're going to have to go simple. And how they explained it to me, they were just phenomenal. It was just a lovely team. And every single office we've been to, we've had a very, very similar experience. So yeah, very, very good. The only thing I didn't like is we had to sit a quiz. Do you remember before I went on to, ferry, on to the ferry bridge <gasps> site? Oh. <laughs> me and Jess and quizzes you know we're not that we're not we're not that great I will love um so we had to sit a quiz and Jess knowing Jess everybody knows Jess now in the videos Jess wasn't really watching and then at the end we were just trying to <laughs> figure out all the answers do we have to, did have to the do the like, room? Did you yeah we did yeah you guys done that and you have to have it's almost like a little assessment room you've got to watch the health and safety video yeah uh-huh yeah yeah, yeah we'll come through that. Yeah, the <laughs> pressure. I was like, oh god, we couldn't cheat or anything. Anyway, so on, on to the girls now. Um, so Rowan, same question with you. Just so, just to remind you, why SSE and what was so exciting about SSE on on the Grad Cracker Hub, please? Yeah. So, um, aside from the amazing sustainability goals and supporting that through technology and enabling the business to reach those goals, um. I also wanted to work for a company that is known as being a fair and inclusive employer. To yeah. me, accessibility is really important. Um, and just being inclusive and a diverse employer is just a company I really want to work for. So yeah. um, if you look on the Grad Cracker website, there's a page about working differently. And again, yeah. I just think that really helps to improve accessibility. Um, and going now being in SSE there's you can be part of groups such as women in tech and be part of conferences yeah. for women in tech so 
that's that's another reason it's just an amazing reason why I wanted to work for SSEs yes. all those company morals and values as well thanks Sharon and, and a, a, you, sorry come on. I can see you feature on the grad I'm cracker just gonna say that <laughs> you, you, you're, you're a, a, your, your face is famous because you're, you're on there twice now after today I know. You've, got, you've got an employee profile on the hub haven't you <laughs> yes that's right that's room. right uh, yeah I think I talk a bit about our accessibility in that profile as well yeah, yeah. you do yeah and, you know, if I was you, um, Ryan, I'd be a bit miffed about, you know, Luke and Paloma because they should have said that their favourite bit on the Grad Cracker Hub <laughs> is, your, is your profile. <laughs> well, no, Luke, you said that. You said you liked the employee profiles. Yeah. Specifically yeah. not Rowan, though, no, was it? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for, for that, Rowan. And Paloma, on to you. Yeah, so I'd say... I chose SSE for very similar reasons than Luke and Rowan. Uh, with my background in electrical engineering and sustainable energy, I just knew I wanted to work for an energy company. Mm -hmm. And it was very important to me that this company had sustainable development and net zero targets as core values. And SSE just fitted very well with this profile. And in terms of what stood out uh, to me on the Grad Cracker Hub, I have to agree with Rowan. Uh, that was one of the main reasons I applied for, for SSE, but also in terms of the graduate program that I chose, I was very excited to see the range of disciplines they were accepting for it as well. So yeah. thought it would be a good opportunity to engage with people from just varied backgrounds and be able to get out of my comfort zone to work in different areas, not necessarily with a technical engineering focus. Perfect. Thank you very much, Pat Paloma. So we've heard from the grads now, obviously, about what attracted them to SSE. So we've had the sustainability being be mentioned, um, the, the range of disciplines accepted, and obviously the graduate programme as well. So I'm going to come to you now, Megan. So your graduate positions are now open. So guys watching this webinar, make sure you watch this webinar thoroughly, think about um, what everybody's saying, and then get your applications in afterwards. So Megan, just give the, the audience a bit of an overview about the positions which are currently open and also what's going to be opening soon and um, I think it's going to be early next year with your placements isn't it? Yes yes so we've got some replacements and um, the recruitment for that won't start until maybe February time so yeah. um, you can kind of sign up for, for job alerts for, for that role so you can get, get notified as, um, as soon as we go live and yeah. um, so yes we are live for the graduate program for next year so it is a, it is a very exciting time to join us and um, just to kind of give you an idea how much we've grown so the graduate program when we first started and um, we had 15 about 15 positions okay. um, and we are now up to I think we've got 130 this year so it has grown a lot and um, so the positions that we've got this year so we've got seven different business areas that are looking to take on graduates so we've got corporate we've got networks and um, within networks is transmission and distribution and um, we've got enterprise renewables thermal and business services as well so the vast majority of the roles um, this year are within engineering so we have 72 roles for engineering and um, a large number of these are electrical and um, however we obviously do have a, a range of other disciplines that that we would accept and um, just depending on the different business areas um, and their different requirements for for the different roles and um, so uh, there's like mechanical, civil, renewable energy, um, and they're all no noted on the advert as well. So you can see them on the hub. Yeah. Um, we have got commercial roles as well. So we've got 40 commercial roles this year. Um, and a lot of those roles um, are open to degrees within a STEM discipline as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we've also got IT. We've got 12 roles within IT this year. Yeah, IT is something that's come on over the years, isn't it? I remember when you started first advertising with us, must have been about six, seven years ago now. Yeah. And, you know, I, IT wasn't massive, it was all, all engineering. And now throughout the years, it's you know, more IT, more engineering. And, you know, the word commercial, Megan, you know, some of our students, but what, what does that actually mean? Could you just give us a bit of a, a, a background to commit the commercial programme? Yeah, so we've, we, we do have... Um, a lot of different roles within kind of commercial this year so um that does kind of cover it does cover the, the it we've got yeah. renewables as well and um, they've got a few different kind of commercial roles and um, so yeah i mean all the, the the information on commercial roles are kind of noted on 
on the on the hub yeah yeah but it can be it can be things like business planning and um, regulation and um, it can go into more like the assets within the within the the different departments um yeah it just it just depends on what business area um yeah. can I, can I go for but yeah there's lots of lots of different uh different roles for commercial yeah I think there's just something for everybody isn't there so any STEM yeah. student out there wanting to work for a fantastic employer like SSE there would be a position that's open um open for you so um just to manage expectations Megan what's the closing dates what's the timelines what should students be um working towards specifically for your great year graduate programs yeah, so um, closing date is the 31st of October, so we've got plenty of time. Um, yeah. And then what we'll do is I'll, I'll kind of I'll run through the, the actual kind of process of it all. But yes. uh, we'll have a we'll have a video interview that will probably be November time. And then assessment centres that will probably be maybe like the middle of December, maybe st probably start of December. Yeah. Um, we do hope to have all the roles filled by Christmas. Um, yeah. But obviously, if that wasn't to happen, it would be the start of of January but um but yeah that is the kind of rough timeline just now perfect thank you very much Megan so just remember if you are looking at for doing a placement at SSE follow them on grad cracker to be alerted round about February time when they open up their um, placements and, and internships and if you are a grad get your applications in now you know Megan said it's it's not long it's about 30 it's 30 30 days from tomorrow it's the first of October so mm -hmm. don't wait until the last minute either you know get your planning and prep sorted out and get your applications in yeah. Megan, I've got a couple of questions. Yeah. I said I wasn't going to go off piece, but just... <laughs> My heart goes when you say this and think about it. She's going to ask me. So for this example, you've got the amount of roles you've got. So say if yeah. you the one programme, is it one graduate per programme or how many people is it per programme that you would recruit? Just understand my question, don't you? Yeah, good good question. And it does depend. So say, for example, we've got renewables, we've got like, um, I think we've got like 10 roles within renewables uh, for engineering. And each role can be like a different from a different discipline. So they will kind of like branch off to different parts of, of projects within renewables. Um, and then the same for, for thermal, we'll have a few roles within kind of engineering, but then they, they might kind of stem off. So uh, so once the graduates kind of get their applications in, um, it will be kind of more clear throughout the interview process and whatnot, where they're going to be kind of suited, depending on what they've kind of studied or the modules that they've gone through um, at university as well. So, yeah, it just it, it depends on on what they're kind of interested in. We, we're, we're happy to kind of steer them. Because it's just the point as well. And it's something that we make, we make the point on the homepage of the website. You know, mm -hmm. when students come on to Grad Cracker, they might see that number of opportunities we've got, but that mm. doesn't equate to the amount of people that can apply, you know, or will get that job at the end of it because there'll be multiple people applying to one job, but that role, that job might recruit multiple people. Do you yeah. see what I mean? Yeah, I do see what you mean, but yeah. Make that point that, yeah. you know, when students do come on to Grad Cracker, um, you know, don't just think, oh, say 150 people are going to get, you know, the job there. There's going to be more than that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's, I think there's 130, um, I would say there's 130 opportunities and then um, there's like obviously the, there's the seven business areas that are kind of recruiting throughout them all. So it does, it does all split up, but, um, but yeah. What I thought you were going to ask, Jess, before I move on to the grads, it is, um, I think some students might want to apply to more than, to more than one of your opportunities, Megan. Is that allowed or should they just think, right, OK, which is my favourite is ever one that I want to apply for? Yeah, I would suggest to do as much kind of research as possible on, yeah. on the Backpacker Hub as well, because um, if it, if you were to go for an engineering role, we, we can only accept one application for, from you. Yeah. Um, so it is important to, to kind of have, have a read through it and just figure out what's going to be best best for you. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And look at the profiles. You know, these are the people who are actually yeah, doing the, so, the job. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, do your research. Right, grads, I'm excited to talk and to you. No. So, Pluma, I'm going to come to you first, my love, if that's OK. Please, can you tell us a bit about the role that you are currently in? Yeah, so I'm in the business and commercial program. So it's a two year program with six months rotation. And in each rotation, we get exposure to a different energy business. So you can be working in thermal, renewables, customer solutions, energy trading, for example. And I have just joined the Sea Green Wind Farm Finance team 
but before that I was working in thermal commercial. So for example, in thermal, my tasks would vary a lot each day. That would depend on what the team needed support with, but could be analyzing how a change in regulation could impact our assets, could be working on strategy for an auction, could be analyzing asset performance, for example. Yeah, brilliant. That sounds really interesting. And how big is your team? What, what, how, how is it working? Are you working virtually at the moment? Are you working from home? Are you in the office? How's that working? Yes, uh, working from home, but I did manage to visit the office one less week at one time last week. So that was very exciting. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was nice to see everyone. And yeah, how big is your team in the, the, in the current role you're in now? Um, it's bigger than the previous one, but uh, oh God, I would say around five people. Right. Ah, interesting. Oh, that's a nice number, isn't it? So you get, but you can get to know each other. Where Where is your local office in Plymouth? So I'm based in Glasgow, but I'm currently working from home in London. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a bit of a commute. <laughs> <laughs> and then in terms of the, the, the five people in your team, are they from a mix of backgrounds? Are they a mix of um, abilities? What, how, how's your team look like? What, what's the five people like? Yeah, so it's the finance team. So each person is responsible for a different aspect of the project, I would say. Um, I just joined, so I'm still getting to know everyone, but I'll definitely say it's a mix of skills and that's that's really important to, yeah. to get the best success. And how would you find it, putting you in position here, Paloma, but how would you find joining a new team? Do you find it quite daunting? Do you enjoy it? You know, and how do the team kind of embrace you? How does it work? We normally have inductions when we just join a team because, of course, uh, I just joined a, a project about a wind farm that I had no prior knowledge about yeah. what's going on. So it does you require a bit of training at the beginning so the first few weeks can be a bit just heavy the learning curve is super steep but after yeah. that you just get the hang of it and just start contributing to the project as well brilliant and that sounds really interesting thanks Paloma okay Rowan I'm going to come to you next same question and um, what current role are you in at the moment and what's it what's it like Oh, I actually joined a new role uh, this week so it's day oh, four wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm currently in EPMI, which is our energy portfolio markets and investment um, business unit. Um, and my role is as the business relationship manager, which is also known as business partner. Um, and that person kind of connects um, the business to IT, helps set up projects, uh, manages the budget, that sort of thing. But as I said, it's day four, so it's still, I'm still finding my feet. <laughs> Ruben's like, don't ask me any more questions about my team at the moment because I have no idea. Yeah. I'm happy to talk about the last two placements. <laughs> what, what, what was your last one, if you don't mind? Yeah, so my last one was in um, Business Energy, which is part of, part of Energy Customer Solutions. Um, and that role, I was um, a business analyst. Um, so I was, work, I, I was doing data analysis a bit, um, mainly, I would say. Um, and we're replacing some of our core systems. Okay, so could you kind of explain that in a more detail in the sense, so, you know, is it business to business that you're working with or how is it more, when you say customers, what customers are they? Um, so for business energy, we supply energy to um, companies like Asda. Um, okay. So it's not domestic customers, we don't supply energy to them. It's, uh, we offer tariffs and energy solutions to other companies yeah right, okay and then so do you work do you have say a client base that you for example just look after asda or would you look after multiple clients um no that's not really what i was involved in so i was involved in replacing a, a system that um so it was our billing system yeah. um so i was looking more into data issues right okay um so, so i wasn't i wasn't yeah, I wasn't directly dealing with customers. I was looking at um, data analysis in replacement systems. Yeah. Sorry, I understand. So um, is there anything that you, would you say that you achieved doing that that made quite a significant change or is there anything that you were involved in you thought, oh, that, that's, that's quite a good improvement? I think if, when you're looking at um, data migration, data cleansing, um, 
you save people a lot of time yeah, <laughs> instead of having to manually input data. Yeah. Um, you save people a lot of time, a lot of money, and you're looking into um, just a smooth transition to a new system. So yeah. it's kind of proactive instead of having to move everyone, all your customers to a new system mm-hmm. and ending up with loads of problems down the line and causing lots of tariff problems. <laughs> um, <laughs> you end up yeah you end up saving a lot of time a lot of money so i think that's that's how um the business analyst and the data analyst helped there yeah yeah really okay and then luke i'm going to come to you next same question what is it you're up to at the moment yeah so um i'm quite similar to other grads where i've just joined um and you can enroll some i'm currently within the electrical team and um, we're working on kind of my projects i've got two offshore wind projects and then a, a pumped hydro scheme um kind of storage and um, project as well so yeah as with other kind of stuff uh, for the, the grad scheme you can kind of just float about so uh, I kind of wanted to go back to my electrical side of stuff because that was kind of part of my kind of um, uni course so I kind of wanted to strengthen that um, so I thought this was a good, good opportunity to do so the variation in work's been great um, yep. so many different get bits of what you can get stuck into um, and the team they, they just treat you like a normal employee um, kind of normal teammate uh, and they do give you a lot of trust, which is what I find really kind of impressive about the course. Um, as I kind of the weight of the work they give you. Um, it's not kind of insignificant kind of admin stuff. It's really you, you put your name to it. It's just your kind of neck on the line. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, yeah, it's just that's that's what makes you kind of get that real experience. Yeah, yeah. sure. So, Luke, have you just ro- done a rotation as well? Are you now on a new new project to in a yeah, meeting? yeah. Okay, is it is it all the same time frames that you've all got or is it just total coincidence then that you've all no it's it's probably that's what my favorite thing about it is it, you've literally got complete autonomy about it so you could stay at a placement for i think my next placement i'm actually just going to do for a week i'm going to go into the operations team um okay. and they do like a thing where you just kind of you go through all the operations bases and you can kind of see and get an insight to kind of how you operate a, a wind farm um but it's all about there's no plan for you when you join the grad scheme. You you seek out what what kind of placements you have an interest in, any gaps in your kind of experience or kind of sectors you want to go visit. It's completely on to you. So you email the people that you um, have an interest in joining your team, um, set up meetings with them, and then see what kind of work they have to offer. Yeah. Um, what's also great is like if you don't like the piece of work you're given they're more than happy for you to get moved to a different piece of work. So it's not as though for three months you're slogging away and you hate the work you're doing. If you're yeah. not kind of feel as you're getting the most out of your, your grad scheme, um, they're more than happy to facilitate something else because I think SSCs, they see this kind of two years of an investment into you. They see it as an opportunity for them to um, come out of it for a really kind of skilled employee. So for them, it's uh, they want to try to facilitate that as much as possible. Um, and in that two years, then you can rotate as many times as you wish. So you're yeah. saying you're doing a week, which is, is really quite short. Is yeah, that so, the shortest ex- experience? Yeah. So, so from my kind of experience, I'd, I'd usually stick to at minimum three months per placement. I think that's kind of what I've done for my previous ones. I kind of done four months for each of them. Um, and that's the kind of um, the correct time because um, if you want to get and it can, some meaty projects you need that time to kind of develop them and get your your teeth kind of stuck in and it it does take a while for um you to get up to speed with stuff so when you join a new team it's not as though you've instantly got the kind of background knowledge and the skills to be able to function in that team um it takes you kind of a couple weeks i'm I'm kind of two weeks in and i'm still kind of finding my feet in this new placement um so it will kind of take you a while to kind of settle in and the, the, the team that you work with are kind of great for that but i'd suggest kind of yeah, three to four months for each placement. Um, I was just kind of lucky that the one that I've, I've kind of looked um, um, for the week is just kind of an intensive course that they're kind of used to doing. Um, it's a good opportunity for us. Yeah, brilliant. It sounds great. Megan, I'm going to come to you next. Um, just about the training support that is offered to the grads in the first few months. And could you give us an outline of what that looks like typically um, for the graduates' kind of first experience? Yeah, so um, I mean, I think probably the graduates would be best kind of going going over that because um, at, from a recruitment side of things, we don't have too much involvement because we kind of pass it on to the graduate, uh, like oh, the program mentors and things like that. So, yeah. um, so I mean, all the graduates do get the most support that, that they can possibly um, get, and they do have like a training plan, but. Um, but yeah, once once we've kind of got them into the business and stuff like that, um, we're not too involved with the training plans. So I, I would probably say that that is something that the the graduates have more of a of a grasp on. 
Okay. Well, I'm going to cover training. Um, well, it's, well, I might, what we'll do is we'll come to training now and then I'll come back uh, to ask about projects and things. So coming back to you, Paloma, then, if you could just tell us a bit about, you know, from a personal point of view, what piece of kind of training have you received or that you kind of enjoyed the most or you thought, you know, really resonated with you that you thought was useful? Yeah, I think the training that I enjoyed the most was one about energy trading. I had just joined the company and for part of the training, we were divided in groups and we were giving some scenarios with weather forecasts, uh, recent events related to the energy market. And we had to decide whether we wanted to buy or sell energy in the market and how much. And we had to make the decision super quick. And it was really just to give us a flavor about the many things a trader needs to take into account before right. making a decision and just how complex the energy market is. Mm -hmm. And my next placement will be in this area. So I'm really looking forward to working that there and just experience this firsthand. So Paloma, just going to delve a bit there if I can. So what what did you learn from it? Did you, can I ask, did you make the right decision? Did you, what, what did you learn from it? I can say my team did not win. Okay. Uh, so we, <laughs> we weren't in last. So oh, that's fine. It wasn't too bad. But it's, it's a taking part that counts, isn't yeah. it? In the day. Yeah. It is, it is. And Paloma, can you give us a bit of a, maybe a hint and tip here or, you know, what is, would you say, the biggest factor? You've obviously you've mentioned, uh, you know, weather conditions and things like that. What is there anything else that was a factor that you didn't really think of or consider or that can affect it massively? Oh God, that will depend the scenario. But like I said, the energy market is really, really complex and I don't have a lot of experience in it uh, for the moment, but it's just it's amazing the amount of factors that could influence this yeah. amazing it's so interesting as well yeah and um, so yeah but you're looking forward then to your next placement <laughs> well good luck with it look and uh Ruan, could I come to you yeah so training what kind of training have you experienced so far that you found most useful um, I was going to talk about the energy trading training okay. as well <laughs> I saw you smiling did you win, I thought, oh. did you win? <laughs> Did you win? Did your team win? No, we didn't win either. <laughs> um, but it was really, really interesting and really valuable, especially since for an IT graduate can go into any different business unit. Um, it really gave us an insight into what's going on, what affects the traders and why the systems are so critical. Um, but there's lots of other training as well. I mean, in IT, um, they'll, there's lots of... Um, Agile training, which is an IT kind of way of working, um, a practice. Um, but we also get a free Azure DevOps training, um, cybersecurity training. There's so much on offer. And, um, yeah, there's just so much on offer. It's, it's hard to talk about what there is. <laughs> that's good that there is a, a breadth of, you know, training mm kind of platforms there for you all to use and experience. How, yeah. how does it work? I, Sorry, I was just going to ask you, um, is it all individual, like one-on-one on, one on one training or is it group training as well? What what would a student, you know, be expecting when they join the programme? Um, in IT, there's a lot of group training. Um, there's lunch and learns and things like that as well, um, which are really good. So you might have 200 people all doing the same training at once on a, a oh, wow. time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's also individual training. Um, I was also going to talk about um, in IT, you have um, a learning development manager mm -hmm. um, and they will look at your placement and look at um, what ITIL, I can't remember what ITIL stands for, <laughs> but it's, um, I, again, it's IT practices. Um, and they will say, oh, you've been able to meet this uh, standard. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps you in your own personal and professional development as well. And how does it work then, you know, on the, I'm guessing you get in mentors, do you get, you know, do you get to liaise with other grads as well? Do you have like, you know, peer to peer kind of sessions? How, how does that work? Yeah, so um, I do have a mentor who's come off the grad scheme as well. Yeah. Um, he's um, a senior data analyst. Um, so we have meetings every other week, um, and he'll help me with, 
um, literally anything um, from what what placement do I, should I go into next or or I'm not sure how to solve this problem. Yeah, yeah the mentoring in IT is really great. That's really good. Um, Luke, can I come to you next? Same question. Yeah, um, I'd love to pretend that I won the trading thing, but I didn't either. Um, <laughs> you should have said that you won. <laughs> no, I think I was in actually. I might be Paloma's team actually. Um, yeah, so within it, I see. I think the training is great. Um, it's usually it's quite frequent that you get kind of big training sessions done, and and it can kind of vary from the big ones that we had together with the trading kind of um, one or it can be kind of smaller groups. Um, right. I think one I done last week was um, around resilience and change. And that was kind of techniques for dealing with kind of change in your life, how you can go about kind of dealing with it. Um, whether that be kind of minor um, or kind of major kind of getting laid off or kind of issues like that. Um, and that was really interesting because a lot of the kind of training things are stuff you don't realize um, are beneficial to you. Um, and they are really good. There's also kind of, it's, it's interesting because you can get as involved as you want to. So um, a lot of the trainings are compulsory, but there's some where there's a thing that SSE run called um, the Week of Learning. And it's a week-long kind of process where they run different seminars the whole week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and every kind of week, every day there's a different kind of topic. So whether that be kind of dealing with change, like all these different things. Um, and you can just sign up for the sessions. So it's like if you want to kind of fill in some kind of voids you think you have, um, kind of areas that you need to improve upon there's always kind of room for you to do that uh, as well as this there's more kind of academic uh, academic stuff so i think we've got a thing called virtual astridge and it's this kind of platform that um it's kind of more professional learning but you, you can sign up for that and it's like you can go to management courses you can go to kind of business development courses um, and this is something that they, they encourage kind of in the first couple of weeks of you join and kind of sign up for this um and when you have spare time just going through these courses because they are so beneficial um and yeah you can learn so much from them yeah that's good are you um wanted to become a chartered engineer or maybe? yeah so that that's something that SSC are great with so i've been assigned a mentor um for the iet so that's the institute of um electrical and technology i think that's what it's called not sure um but yeah they take you through so every kind of couple of months i have a meeting with him and uh, for each placement you review your status um kind of the the evidence you have for that's that kind of whether it, like there's like four different levels of skill you have whether it's kind of beginner or kind of a uh, practitioner or that kind of stuff um and with each placement you develop your skill which you give evidence based upon uh, how you think you've done and um, for that specific skill and your mentors that talk you through it as well so you've kind of got a, a placement kind of manager um to talk to you for your development your IT mentor talks to you for your development um and yeah, it's so useful. Uh, there's so many different ways that you can get in touch with people and learn from them and kind of get advice as well. That's good. Brilliant. It's great that you've got such a support network there. Yeah, Thank no, you. I think that's one of the, the best things. You've got a graduate manager, mm-hmm. then you've got a mentor, then you've got um home placement manager, which is kind of from your first kind of placement. It's kind of where they hope that you could end up in the end. And then with every kind of um, placement, you have people assigned to you, kind of supervisors and managers as well. So there's always kind of people to go to. And you never feel isolated. You always feel as though there's people you can contact. That's good. We sure to what, yeah, I was just thinking when we went up to Perth, Jess, we met that young grad um, and he was, was he the, he got chartered, the, either, either the quickest or was the youngest person to get chartered yeah. um, at SSE. And his profile is also on, on the hub. But it's, um, I can't remember his name now, but yeah, he was a really fascinating, uh, fascinating young man. So yeah, well worth a look um, at his profile as well. Um, yeah, so next, I know we kind of skimmed upon this question, but I want to go back to it. It's just projects. Um, so if we could just quickly give everyone a bit of a heads up on either a favourite project that we've been working on. I'm going to come back to you again, Pullum, if that's okay. Yeah, so just some example of projects that I've been involved in. In Seagreen, I've just joined, but I'm giving support in the after sales process. So after we built the transmission assets of the wind farm, we participated in an auction to sell them. And in my last placement, for example, I was involved in capacity auction strategy. So those are auctions that we get paid for having available capacity uh, in the system. And also, for example, one of the tasks that I did on my last placement was to use VBA and Power BI to generate automated monthly reports that would enable us to analyze asset performance. So that was very interesting. 
Oh, I bet. Question there, Thurma. You know, say, for example, you create a whole field of wind farms. Would you sell the whole set of wind farms or would you sell off auction and off different wind farms to different companies? Yeah, so, uh, for example, we won uh, CFD auctions for a sea green already. So for a portion of the wind farm, we... Uh, so CFD is a subsidy mechanism in the UK. So you get paid sort of a fixed, let's say a fixed price of energy. So it makes it safer for and more attractive for investors to invest in the wind farm. So yeah, there are different ways for you to get your revenue from your wind farm. You can also have corporate purchase, uh, power purchase agreements. So uh, I think someone mentioned this earlier as well and yeah we can just have a contract with uh an institution to sell a part of our power as well you have to watch just with these questions paloma because there's always a hidden agenda like she'll probably be thinking now that she's going to go and buy a wind farm or something we're not buying wind farms okay leaving this to professionals (laughs) shall now boss let's buy wind farm (laughs) um um rowan come to you next favorite project so far yeah, it's hard to talk about my favourite project, um, but I, I particularly enjoyed my first placement um, and that was in Renewable and Thermal. Um, so I was looking at um, incident management for each of the sites. And um, so that could range from application outages that co- could cause lots of financial losses. You don't want an outage. No. A power station <laughs> especially now on a live webinar <laughs> yes <laughs> um so yeah i was looking at incident management and that was been renewable as well and so i got to look at um incidents for dog bank and sea green so i was involved in that project as well and i think to be able to be in it and actually see what is actually going on and how you're reaching those sustainability goals as well is really interesting and i just found that fascinating and um, being involved in re- the renewable and thermal technology as well oh yeah. i'm sorry i missed the name of what you said then what was the name of the project oh um i just said that i was involved in um incident management for sea green and dog bank which is the wind farms that paloma and luke have been talking about sorry missed that right interesting <laughs> that's good isn't it mm, it was really okay. interesting do you, so in terms of i like to ask this question and this is going off piece of it but knowing what you know now Mm-hmm. Has it changed your mind in terms of where you can see your career going? Knowing what I know now. About your job and what you've experienced so far. Before you started, would you, can you see your career going in the same path to what you think it's going to go now? So some of the roles that I've been in on the three different placements, I didn't know actually existed before yeah. I joined SSE so I didn't know what a service delivery partner is and that's the person that's analyzing the incidents and trying to quickly find a solution um I yeah I didn't know that was a role that existed and now that's definitely a potential for what I want to go into because it was so fascinating um I kind of knew that business analyst was a thing um but now I've been able to do it um again I didn't know how in depth that role goes into and the possibilities that it leads to and um, yeah. so I think knowing what I know now has opened opened what I oh gosh <laughs> opened my eyes to see to yeah. find what I want to go into um, winter and the reason why I ask it because again so many times I speak to I speak to students and sometimes you you know you've got the idea of where you want to go don't you Mm-hmm. But, you know, sometimes gaining that experience can either change your mind or open up doors to different opportunities that you could never imagine yourself and go into. So I always say to the students listening now, you know, don't shut any doors. Keep all no. your options open. Mm-hmm. Consider all the employers, all the opportunities, because, for example, they could be listening to us, could be listening to this now and never really considered SSE before, but thinking, wow, I can definitely have a career here. Mm-hmm. So, yes, open all the doors. Don't shut them. Luke, I'm, 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 I'm conscious of time. Yeah. So tell me a project, but tell me a great project. Okay. Um, <laughs> so so I think, w- yeah, I think the, the one that I kind of um, enjoyed the most, just funnily enough, the one that was the most out of my comfort zone, so probably similar to mm-hmm. a few other people. Um, the one like, that wasn't even um, kind of engineering based, I went into corporate affairs and regulations within networks. So that was kind of 
more yeah. finance and interpersonal skill based. Um, and that's what I love about the grad scheme is the fact that you can do, you can try stuff that you've never tried before. Um, so this was kind of yeah more to do with finance and kind of dealing with different people, kind of liaising with MPs, um, and it was building the business plan for SSE. Um, so in terms of the funding we'll get in the future, um, for on kind of green projects and kind of doing that, you could see um, with a lot of the renewable stuff, it's in the future. It's kind of um, five or six years down the line, but. With the work I was doing here, it was like now and then the work, like the money's going to get reinvested and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed kind of putting myself out of my comfort zone and then um, I, I learned so much from that. So I'd always suggest if you do get a role in any of these companies, um, yeah, always try to push yourself and see where you can go, even though I've been before. Yeah, that's a really good bit of advice, you know. And this is why as well, you know, doing a placement, doing grad programmes like this, it's all about getting that experience, isn't it? And then again, up my analogy of open these doors, keep them all open. Don't mm-hmm. <laughs> um, futures, I think, is it next, Carla? Yeah, it? I, I was going to feel a bit unfair because you've all just started on your know, next placement, but you know, future, future plans. Um, have we got anything that you know springs to mind that you think, oh, I'm going to do this bit of training moving forward, or my next placement is going to be this, even though you've just started your current placement? But what, what's in store for the future, even if it's five years down the line or tomorrow? And we're going to start with Rowan for this one. Um, (laughs) yeah like I I don't have an answer (laughs) yeah I mean I I'm focusing on this thing the for for me my my placements are a bit different um in IT the six month placements um so I'm going to focus on this six month placements really focus on that business relationship management role um I don't know what I'm going to choose for my next six months but it's likely to be in a role that I want to go into afterwards and when we come off the grad scheme in IT we tend to go into um, a junior role so that will be either a junior business analyst or a junior project manager so I'm likely to go into a junior role and then a year after hopefully progress into that role itself be less junior and more (laughs) yeah less junior (laughs) (laughs) I like I like that really like that Um, (laughs) Luke have you got anything that you want to share with your for your future yeah. Um, so as I kind of said, I'm, I'm looking to that operations kind of placement. Um, yeah. But one of the most interesting things about renewables is the kind of the bidding process for um, offshore wind sites. So that's a kind of really interesting um, facet of the business in that um, you do have to kind of compete with other, the other companies, the other yeah. um, energy providers for this land. Um, and that can be a really interesting um, area to go into because, it, again, it's... Um, different from engineering background there's a lot kind of different skills you pick up from that yeah um there's a like there's a, a few new bids coming up this year we've got kind of scotland and it's bidding for a lot of seabed um in the hope that we can kind of keep um pushing our renewable output um so a lot of kind of important work gets put into the bidding team so that's something that's really interesting um kind of further down the line i'd love to become chartered um yeah. engineer i think that's kind of a, a key kind of thing um and kind of after the grad scheme, um, I kind of I, I, w- I would really like to get involved in the offshore projects because there's a, so many different um, opportunities. It's a, it's a huge new world market, yeah. um, and there, there's also kind of um, working abroad potential. So I think we've just recently partnered with kind of a Japanese company. So there's potential there for kind of moving kind of places. There's also kind of things down in Spain and Portugal. Um, so those kind of um, opportunities are something I'm really interested in. I'd love to kind of work abroad. So. Yeah, I can see myself moving into the offshore wind kind of side of stuff. Wow, we've got an exciting future ahead of you, Luke, haven't you, with all these different options that you can go into? I'm quite quite jealous. Oh, um, I hope so. <laughs> fingers crossed, everything's crossed. Um, Paloma, how about you and your future? Yeah, no, like I said, my next placement will be in this area of trading, so I'm really, really looking forward to it. And just yeah. in terms of training, next week I have two sessions on energy markets so that should be very interesting as well and one for relationship building perfect well i wish you all the best for the future and um, to to all the grads who are who are um, joining us today on the panel and um, megan i want to finish with you so obviously the grads have just mentioned about the fantastic opportunities which are available at sse and i can guarantee that all of the audience watching wants to be you know part of sse and and you know they're part of their future with you guys so we've been through um, the application process, we've been through timelines and everything else. 
If you were to offer any, um, there's a couple of questions really, offer any hints and tips specifically to grads who are applying, is there anything that really springs to mind that you think, right, okay, make sure you do X, Y, Z? Yeah, I think, to be honest, research is key before, before you can get your application in. Um, okay. I think there's so much information on the Grad Cracker Hub that you can yeah. go through and just really familiarise yourself with everything. And I think um, there's a section on videos as well, which you can go on and there's a lot a lot of grads kind of speaking about, about what they've been doing. Um, profiles as well, that will that will really help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably just kind of taking your time. I think throughout the, the different application like the processes, we've got so just like the standard online application. Um, and that is that is just a CV and um, application form, which kind of, we're just kind of asking about your degree discipline. It is pretty straightforward, kind of 10 minute um, online application. So. Yeah, just be open and honest with 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 your answers i would say um and then after that we've got the online testing as well so that is um that is sent out automatically once you've done your your online um application mm -hmm. so what um that is that's run from a company called shl yeah. so what they what they do is they actually send out um two practice tests that you can do uh, prior to to doing your own online test which I would recommend um, doing um, just so you can familiarize yourself with the, the with the, the format the system itself um, and just take your time to actually kind of go through them so the tests um, one is a judgment test so it's just it, it will give you like a few different scenarios about um, about some of the like the graduate situations that you might find yourself in um, and then you'll also get a numerical and problem solving test as well so so yeah, I would just say just just take your time, just try and try and prepare as, as much as you can. What what we do is we send out when we send out the inf um, the invitation, we'll include as much information as we can, so it does give you um, time to prepare and whatnot. Um, again, with the video interview, this is a pre-recorded um, video interview. So basically, the system will ask you your question, it will give you time to prepare, yeah. and then um, it will it will record your answer, and then we review it. So that is the next stage after the online test. So again, I would just say, just take your time, just do your research and just kind of um, utilize, utilize the um, prepare time as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just scribble down notes and just, just speak from the heart as well. I think if um, the, the video recorded, if it is kind of scripted, then it is better if you're just kind of chatting about, about, your, about your degree and what you've done, all your experiences and whatnot, so that we can really get an idea of, um, of what you're going to be interested in, so we can kind of envision you in the business, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's um, all about people's personalities as well, isn't it, Megan? It's not just about yeah. giving the right or wrong answer. It's, you know, if you're going to fit in the team and everything else, it's how it's really how you, you come across and how um, excited you are to be wanting to, to join SSE. Yeah, exactly. I think um, if you come across that, you, that you're really kind of wanting to be involved, mm -hmm. in that, it does. It definitely does show. So, um, so yeah, and then we've got the online assessment centre as well. That is the final stage after that video. So um, the successful candidates would be invited to that. So it depends on the business area, but there are a few different options. So it could be like a group exercise, uh, possibly a presentation, um, and then like a one-to-one -one interview as well. So um, again, I would say that um, we will give you plenty notice for this as well, um, mm -hmm. so it gives you time to to get your presentation all um, all sorted and, and yeah, and you can just do as much research as you can. Um, one thing I did want to say as well is at any point of our application process, um, we can make adjustments um, 100%. So if it is yeah. literally from from the online application to the tests to the, the group assessments, anything at all, if any of the graduates need any adjustments um, made, then please email us. Um, I think you, our email is on the hub, but it's uh, just graduates at sse.com. So it is definitely, it's important just to, to let us know and we can accommodate you guys as well. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Megan. That's, that's really good for everybody to know that as well. Um, so what I'm going to say is, or oh, you, you just sprung something to mind, the Grad Cracker Toolkit as well, Megan. So when you're doing your research, like Megan just mentioned, SSE sponsor two um, sections of the Grad Cracker Toolkit. So it's well worth um, a read just to make sure that you know about all the different business areas. So go online to onto Grad Cracker and um, you can access the ebook there or go to your career centre and pick up a hard copy. 
Um, I think we are finished today. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. A brilliant insight, as always. And then, as I say, go on and have a look at the insight that me and Jess went on a couple of years ago at the three different sites. We had an absolute ball, didn't we, Jess? Um, so go and have a look at that. So thank you very much, everybody. Don't forget that um, closing date for the graduate opportunities is the 31st of October. Get your applications in as soon as you can. Mention to Megan and, and the team there, Charlene and Hazel, that you've um, watched this GradCracker webinar. You know, they want to know that you've done your prep and you are excited and giddy about joining SSE. So thanks, everybody. Um, next week, we are joined by Mercedes Formula One. Dum, 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 drum roll, please. Um, and it's quite cute, actually, because some of the IPs who are attending um, the webinar next, next week actually watched us as part of the webinar last year. So that's why they applied, wasn't it? That's why they applied. So really good success stories today, obviously from our grad crackerettes and also next week. So join me and Jess next Thursday at two and we'll see you all then. But thank you very much today for SSE. Thank you, SSE. Bye, everyone. Thanks, SSE. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.